Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank, where Crystal Palace are taking on AFC Wimbledon in a thrilling matchup from Selhurst Park. This is a, an uncomfortable situation for AFC Wimbledon, of course, because we, we were formerly forced to play in Selhurst Park when uh, Plow Lane was abandoned. And so it's always a little weird to come back here because, you know, we, we, we've been singing this song for the last 20 years. You can see Mr. Managerino has mixed feelings about it. By the way, we are no longer in first place in the Premier League. That's probably a permanent goodbye to first place in the Premier League, but it was fun while it lasted. We've been singing a song for the last 25 years, Show Me the Way to Plow Lane, I'm Tired and I Want to Go Home, uh, in which we uh, talk about Selhurst Park being an effing dump. And uh, here we are, back in the effing dump. But wherever we may roam, even Selhurst Park, you will always hear me singing this song, Show Me the Way to Plow Lane. Hopefully the boys are on their way back to Plow Lane, uh, or at least on their way back to Wimbledon uh, with the building of the new stadium. But meanwhile, we're going to take on Crystal Palace here in the Premier League. It's, a, it's an important matchup for us. It's a big moment. And we've got some new faces to try to change the vibe after our victory last time out. You can see the soulless dead eyes of the spectators as they prepare to watch this incredibly exciting football match. So making his AFC Wimbledon debut is Mamoun uh, there in central defense and Castro as uh, in front of the front four, the central defensive midfielder. Vinny Thrill is moving into his natural position in central attacking midfield. And we've got um, the Icelandic guy with the long hair and Dicko up front. So it's gonna be an exciting, uh, it's gonna be an exciting day. We're going to do our best to win this game. We're up, we've got Roger East, a bald referee. Always a good sign. We love a bald. And uh, we've got a problem to solve today. It's from Mary, who writes, As someone who has asked for a lot of advice, how do you escape the gnawing feeling that you might make things worse if you're wrong? Avoid answering honestly? That feels like deserting people in a time of uncertainty or confusion. But answering feels almost unacceptably risky, perhaps more so because I won't bear the consequences directly. Oh, Mary, you're too good of a person. That's the issue. You need to let all of that go and just give people bad advice. I like I don't think that I, I guess the the way that I justify it and like look I I try to emphasize that both here and on Dear Hank and John like we're basically my brother and I are essentially in the business of not giving of giving bad advice. This by the way this is a terrible camera angle. Selhurst Park really is a dump. I hate this I hate this camera angle. <laughs> like I can barely see the goal. It's I I thought the point of FIFA was not to like recreate television camera angles honestly but to make it so that i can pretend to play football oh oh god it was just one little skill move away from being a goal there but instead we're losing well we're tying right now but i'm worried that we're going to lose because we can't i really can't afford to lose two games in a row that's the kind of that's not the kind of form that a premier league winning side has that's a, that's a nice ball. It's a great ball for Dick. Oh. oh, that was a good ball. And then Dicko just couldn't quite, just couldn't quite wrap his foot around it enough to get it in the back of the net. And we never score from corner kicks. Great. No, we never score from corner kicks. <laughs> so, yeah, our advice is bad. That's the number one way that I get around the problem. But I also think, like, it, people people want... I think when people are seeking advice, they're not actually... They're not necessarily going to listen to the advice. What they're really seeking is, like, more information about a question, right? So, like, they have a problem that, that can't be solved with the limited information set that they have. And, like, probably it will never be solvable in the sense that, like, most of the time, like, a big part of human life is having to make decisions with incomplete information sets, right? Like, when you decide where you're going to go to college or whether to go to college, you don't know what life is going to be like if you go to this college or that college. You don't know what life is going to be like if you have this career or that career. But you make your best guess as you go with the information set that you have. 
So I think what advice is like really sets out to do is to increase people's information sets by hearing about other people's experiences. Uh, maybe like, ah, gosh, I'm in trouble. Ideally, learning some, you know, some something data data based about whether this idea or that idea is statistically more likely to be a good idea. So I think there's a lot of ways that we try to increase our information sets, but it, but but advice is, is one important one. And so this is why I find it really annoying when uh, somebody gives me advice and then I don't follow it and they take that personally because I wasn't asking you to live my life for me. <laughs> I was asking you to give me your opinion on how I should live my life and... I need you to trust me that I listened to that opinion and that, like, I, I am grateful for the way that you increased my information set, but that, like, your opinion isn't the authoritative guide to living a human life. It's just one data point among several that I'm going to use when making decisions. And that's, the to me, both the proper way to give advice and the proper way to take advice, which is that, like, y you don't hear somebody say, like, oh, I think you should go to college and conclude, like, well, therefore I should go to college. You listen to somebody say, oh, I think you should go to college, and then you add that to what you already know and to what you may learn from talking to other people. And, and to me, when I... That, so that's the kind of advice I try to give is not like authoritative, this is right, there's only one right way to live. Like whatever I hear, like there's a, there, that's, a big, that's a big podcast thing. Like that's a whole genre of podcasts, the, um, you know, the guide to living the like perfect, perfect life. It, it tends to be kind of uh, men talking to men, at least the ones that, I, that I've listened to. And I, I find it a really interesting podcast genre. Oh, my God, Dicko, I needed you to pass one nanosecond earlier. And it was an easy, guaranteed goal. We're close. We're close, y'all. We, we, we just, ugh. I mean, this is, this is a big game. You know, Selhurst Park, it's, it's, it's an emotionally fraught place for, for us to be. And I think you're feeling some of that nervous energy right now. And we're in trouble. Wow. Wow, Rafo. Just dis that guy one guy is so disappointed he just put his fingers inside of his head, which is an extreme reaction to the situation. So, all right. Well, I mean, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a little more time with Omarson and Dicko because they are actually connecting pretty well. It's just they haven't scored a goal, which I, 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 I honestly blame more on the weird angle of the camera than I blame on anything else. Um, so I don't know that I don't know that bringing in the John Greens would lead to a considerable difference here, but maybe that's good. That's good. Shoot. That was bad. All right, that's that. That's it for Omarson. I mean, that doesn't have to be it for Dicko yet, but I think we've got to bring on... Look, we've got a guy with 90 skill level, right? Like, why not bring him on and see what he can do? Okay. I'm just trying to... I really don't want to get to the end of the season with exhausted players and be forced in, like, you know, a tense battle for whatever I'm battling for at the end of the season to not be able to play John Green and John Green because they're so tired. But at the same time, they are overwhelmingly our best strikers. So it's a tough, it's a tough position to be in. So as long as you give advice, in my opinion, and I might be wrong about this because all of, all of my opinions might be wrong, but in my, in my opinion, in my experience, as long as you give advice that is intended as as advice and not as like you know a prescription for the only right way to live a life then i think you're in the clear because then you're not going to get mad at somebody if they don't take your advice and they can't get that mad at you if you if your advice turns out not to be that helpful it's vinny thrill why did you shoot from way outside when you could have passed a ball john green who's better Oh, it's frustrating. I mean, that that's that's on me. Like like a lot of like a lot of what happens 
said the FIFA 18 Wimbly Wombly's. That's uh, that's ultimately down to Mr. Manager Rinio. Nice piece of defending. All right, turn the ball, Frankenstein. Turn the ball. Go to the corner. Do the Frankenstein thing. Cut back. Pass to Dicko. Yes. 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 Turn. Show. Oh God, that was so heartbreaking. I've been sadder, but only rarely. Okay, we're bringing on, we're just, we're going all out. We're bringing on, we're just, we're, we're replacing the front three, basically. That's the, that's, that's the situation. Our three substitutions are all attacking substitutions. It's a way of saying to Crystal Palace that we intend to win this game. And we do. Oh, God, but not by playing like that. Good, goodness gracious. As for feeling like the advice that you give might, like, lead somebody to, like, catas a catastrophically bad decision, the other people's decisions are their decisions. And the point of advice is not to, like, force people into one life or another. Um, it's to, you know, it's to share experiences and expertises. I mean, look at Ball John Green racing across the pitch over and over again. Ball John! Oh, God, everything but the finish. He had everything. He had everything but the last move. That's pretty good. Oh, oh God! I mean, we got to get Vinny Throw off the pitch. He's too tired. He's not the player I need right now. I need an Oma. We're already in the 80th minute. We can't get a substitution in. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. Oh goodness gracious, Vinny Thrill again. He's just not. He's he's not up for it today. I'm tempted to throw the ball out of bounds, but I also just don't feel like I have much time left. So I'm not going to throw the ball out of bounds. Here's Dicko. He's struggling. There's John Green. Oh, man. I should have thrown the ball out of bounds. I made a big mistake by not throwing the ball out of bounds to make these substitutions. And now they're not even going to get made before the end of the game. We're rushing back. Okay, it's Rafo. All right, I'm going to throw the ball out of bounds now. Well, I tried. <laughs> oh, no. I can't even throw the ball out of bounds right. Dang it. Go, oh, God. Off the post. No. Is that the end of the game? Did the game end 0-0? Zero, zero? Even though they scored in the last second, it did. Okay. Well, I guess as games go, it could have been worse. Ugh. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.